for Rocky. Rocky, how did you start making kilts, and at what point did you realize you could turn it into a business? <clears throat> in my uh, mid twenties, I was kind of. Uh, I had a journal I used to keep, and in my journal I was, you know, uh, my philosophy, for lack of a better term, a 25-year-old 20, philosopher, as it were, um, as much as that could be. Um, and just kind of talking about, you know, do I really care what other people think about me? Do I, you know, am I a man of my word? That kind of thing. And in one of my entries that I kind of ended it with, you know, I've always wanted to wear a kilt and I never had the guts to do it. And I just kind of put down the pen and thought about it, and I was like, that's it. I need to wear a kilt. So, you know, that's, you know, kind of the symbol of all of this kind of brought up into a, an actual garment of clothing. So I went out, bought a couple kilts, cheap ones, um, and started wearing them out. And then after I was wearing them for a little while, a couple of my friends saw me wearing them and they started wearing them. And then we kind of got together and said, okay, we can make this. Um, and then we started making them and just kind of got better and better at it. Um, so that's really the, the, the crux, the beginning of the company was making them. And for the most part, it was just for beer money. It wasn't a business right off the bat. It was just something fun to do. And then it was always uh, financially driven, if you will, in the fact that it was for beer money, which I wanted. Um, <laughs> but but at the same time, it wasn't necessarily a full grown company. Um, so I was working like a hobby, like a hobby business. Yeah, it was right? more of a hobby business. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> I never looking back at it, I never really treated it as a hobby business. It was always effectively, even when it was a secondary job, it was still a full-time job. Okay. I used to work for a company in uh, King of Prussia called Blades Board and Skate. I was a retail manager for a snowboard, skateboard, inline skate company. And the uh, uh, that company started having some financial difficulties and started, you know, the writing was on the wall that it was going to go out of business. So I was working there effectively 40 hours a week, and I was working on the kilt thing 30 plus hours a week. I mean, I'm not exaggerating by any stretch. Um, so eventually at some point I just said, okay, I think I can give it a go. And I just, you know, put in my notice at my other job, you know, thank you for the, you know, for the time. Thanks for the memories. And started doing the kilt thing full time with my, you know, at the time girlfriend, now wife Kelly. Um, and it was it was scary. I mean, we had, you know, standing up on our own two feet, the two of us working in a little tiny 500 square foot cottage, um, you know, fighting over orders. Well, I got to make rent this month, so I need the extra money. I need to make that kilt. And, you know, well, I want to eat tonight, so I got to make the kilt. So we used to pay ourselves based on the kilts that we would make. Um, and then we just took the money that we were making from the accessories and just kept flipping that money back into the company and just grew the company that way. We never took a dime out of the kilt hose and sporins and all the other stuff, we were just paying ourselves as if we were laborers. And then we gave away all the rest of our administrative labor for free. Um, and then just to be able to grow the business. And eventually we were able and fortunate enough to move to a, another location in Phoenixville and hire Mac, who's you know been a very, very long tenured employee um, and just grow it from there. And now we're a 10 person business, you know, going full tilt and we have our own TV station. <laughs> All this. Exactly. And you occasionally sleep once in a great while. Yeah, <laughs> cat naps. Yeah.